Hi, this is David Williams, and this is part two of the Boolean algebra simplification video series. In this video, I'm going to focus on factoring and expanding to simplify Boolean algebra expressions. First of all, a simple example of expanding an expression. And when you're expanding a Boolean algebra expression like this, it follows the exact same rules as regular algebra expansion. Basically, you can use the acronym FOIL, which stands for first outside, inside, last, meaning multiply the first terms in the, in the brackets, then multiply the outside terms of the brackets, then multiply the inside terms, and then finally multiply the last terms. So what we end up with is first terms a times c, or since we're doing Boolean algebra, this is going to be a and c, plus or or the outside terms a or a and d, or the inside terms, b and c, or the outs, uh, the last terms, b and d. In this particular example, this is not really a simplification. This is just to show you how to do an expansion. In this example, we'll use the expansion to expand out this expression, and then we'll use some of the other rules of Boolean algebra to simplify the expression. So the first terms, a not b, Anded with a not b. It's going to give me a not b and a not b, but I can just write it out one time because anything anded with itself will just be itself. And then the outside terms. It'll be a not b anded with not c. And then the inside terms here, or with not b c, a not b, and then the last terms, or with not b, c, not c. I can do some quick simplification by recognizing the multiple b, not b terms in here and the c, not c terms in here. So anything anded with the inverse of itself is going to become zero. So that whole term is going to be zero. So I can just drop it. And then the not b term, I can just, I don't need the duplicates of it. So this then will be equal to a not b or with a not b, not c, or with, I'll also rearrange this, a, not b, c. Now, I want to look for some common factors, so I can factor out that common factor from the different terms. And it can be single variable common factor or multiple variable common factors. The more, actually, the more variables that are in common, the better. And in this case, I actually have a, not b, a, not b, and a, not b in all three of these terms. So I can factor out that a not b term from each part of the overall expression. So when I take it out of there, I'm left with just one. When I take it out of this ex part of the expression, I'm just left with not c. And when I take it out of this part of the expression, I'm left with c. Anything ordered with one will simply be one. So this expression is simply equal to a not b. Another example of the power of factoring I have this sum of product expression, and in each one of these products, I'll look for common expressions that I can factor out. In these two terms here, I see that I have a not a, not b, and a not a, not b. So I'll factor, I'll factor that out of these two expressions. So not a, not b, factored out of that leaves me a not c, and factored out of that leaves me a c. So I've got a not c or c, that'll just be a one, so basically that goes away and I'm just left with not a, not b. Over here, I have a common a not b expression. So I'll factor that out. a not b factored out of the first term, factored out of this term, leaves me the not c, and then factored out of this term leaves me the c. So that gives me not a not b. And over here, again, not c or with c gives me one, so that part goes away, and I have a not b. Oh, I forgot the not over the b here. Now, what can I do? Well, I've got, again, I could do some more factoring. I have a not b in this term and a not b in this term. So factor that not b out. And I get not a or with a. And again, not a or with a, something invert or with its inverse will leave me with one. So that will be not b and one, which of course is simply equal to not b. Now I want to show you something that's a little less easy to follow. In this particular example, I could 
expand this whole expression out and then do simplification. This is in the product of sums form. So what I could do is look for factors that are common and then factors that are inverses of each other in, in the two different sum parts of the expression. So the factors in the sum part of the expression that are in common are the a or b. So I've got a or b here and I've got a or b here. And then I have not d in this sum expression and d in this sum expression. So what I can do then is make this equal to a or b, the common part, ORed with the not d part and it with the d part. So these two expressions are equal to each other. The not d and the d part go away because not d and it with d will simply be 0. So the result will simply be a or b. And this is a really powerful simplification technique that you can use if you have product or sums expressions instead of multiplying everything out, which would be just be, well, with two, three sum terms, it might not be too hard. But if you have more than, more than two, it's going to be a lot of algebra. And here is an example where expanding this expression out would just be undoable if you were to do it by hand. So I'm going to do this this method of looking for factors that are in common and then the other factor, the other, the other variable that is the one value and then the inverse of itself. So I've got a A and a not A here and a B or not C, B or not C here. So that term and that term will, will match up. I'll just label that number one. Then I have a and not A here, and a not B or C, not B or C. So this matches the pattern, so I'll label that one 2, and I'll label that one 2. Now I could carry on with the method that I just showed you for both these 1 and 2 matches, but I want to try to get this one to match, otherwise I'm going to have a three-term expression that I'll still have to, have to expand out. So in this particular one, I have a not A, not C there, and a not A, not C here, while I have a B and a not B there. So I'll label this one 3, and this one is 1, and it also matches up to 3. So looking at 1, I've got A or B or not C, and not A or B or not C. And that will be equal to A not A or with B or not C. That term's equal to 0, so it goes away. For match number two, I have A or not B or C ended with not A or not B or C, which gives me A not A are the term and its opposite, and then the terms that are common, B or C. That goes away, it's equal to zero. For three, I'll have not A or B or not C ended with not A or not B or not C. The terms that are common are the not A or with not C and the terms that are opposite is the B and the not B, B or not B, that goes away. I'm just left with not A or not C. Now I can combine these back together. I can bind these sum terms back together by, multi by multiplying them or anding them together. So I get B or not C anded with not B or C anded with not A or not C. I'm still not finished. What I can do is expand this out now. It's still it's going to be a little bit of work but it's nowhere near as much work as it would have been if we were working with the original equation. What I'm going to do is expand these two out and then multiply that result by the B or not C. So that's equal to B or not C times, or anded with, not B and not A, the outside, or sorry, the first, then the outside, not B, not C, then the inside, C, not A, and then the last, C, not C. There's not much that disappears on this, it's just going to be the C and not C. When those are anded together, it becomes zero, so I'll get rid of that. Now I'm going to go through, multiply b by every term in the, this part of the expression, and then not c by every term in this part of the expression. 
So I will get B, not B, not A, ORed with B, not B, not C, ORed with B, C, A. I don't need to do anything there because that one's zero. ORed with, going back to the beginning, I'll multiply the not C through the terms. Not C, not B, not A, ORed with not C, B, not C, ORed with not C, C, A. Now, right away, I notice that there's some terms that can go away. B and not B and it together will give me zero, so that's just a zero. B and not B again, that's a zero. I have a not C, C over here, so that'll be zero. And then I've got two not C, so that'll just become one. So I'll rewrite this expression. I'm just going to put things in alphabetical order now. A, B, C, ORed with this term, not A, not B, not C or with B, not C. Oops, I just noticed that that should be a not A there. So that would be the not A right there. Oh, and I also noticed that that should be a not B. So that will be a not B. Now what I can do is look for the common factors. See, so I have a not B, not C here, and a not B, not C there. So I'll have the not A, B, C term there, or with not B, not C, factored out of this term, leaves me with just not A, and factored out of this term just leaves me 1. So that will be equal to not A, B, C, ORed with B, C, both of those inverted. And that's actually as simple as I can go. This B, C term and this not B, not C term don't cancel out. They would only cancel out if this, if this entire expression here was inverted. I mean, it wouldn't, it's not that they'd cancel out, but I'd have a BC term that I can deal with here, and then I'd have a BC inverted term that I would deal with here. And then I could use some, some more rules of Boolean algebra to simplify, simplify things. But because the inversion is over the B and over the C individually, I'm not able to do that. So I think I'll wrap things up for the, with these Boolean algebra simplification examples, and I'll see you in the next video.